Hey everybody, it's me, Keisha, and I'm so glad to be with you today. Um, I have been MIA, missing in action for a little while, but um, I'm back. And, um, you know, when you're a wife and a mom and a homeschool mom and a practitioner and, um, you know, you have a body of um, fam a family of sisters and brothers and the Lord, and you just life, the Lord sometimes has you pause something, right? And so, hey, podcast had to pause for a minute, but I am here and I'm excited about the topic at hand. Today, we're going to talk about what's the difference between your husband and a light bulb. I bet you can't. Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. So I'll just get right to it and tell you the answer to the little riddle. Um, the answer is a light bulb you can change, your husband you can't. I bet you figured that out, right? But I have so many women, wives in particular, who come to me all the time and their complaint is about their husbands, right? Keisha, he is not um, helping with the kids enough. Um, he's not helping on house. Um, he's not he even listen. He likes to be late. He makes me late for things. Um, you know, I need some help around with, with dinner and he seems to be, you know, that seems to be the gym time. Um, you know, what can I do to change him? That's what everybody wants to know. What can I do to change my husband? And you can't change your husband. And when you feel like you want to, you need to go find a light bulb because that's the only thing you can change outside of changing you, right? So early on in my marriage, right, um, my husband, when we, when we were getting ready to go somewhere, a, a trip that would take us, that would allow us to be in the, in the car longer um, than, you know, a few minutes, he would have to go down to the basement, to his desktop computer, and burn um, a CD for music for the journey, right? He needed mood music, and my husband is a um, loves music, right? He is a huge fan of music and art form, and um, he just loves it. He uh, was a professional background singer at one time in his, in his life, and um, and he's loved music ever since he was a child. And so he and he even remembers things based on what songs were out, what year it was. And he'll say, oh, yeah, this was the song or he'll hear a song and it'll bring back, you know, very specific memories. I love that about him. I am not. I am not. I repeat, I am not. A music person. I, I like to listen to it, but you know, all that I, you know, my husband can listen to something and say, oh, that pitch is off or that tone or whatever. She's tone deaf or whatever. I, you know, it's either a good song or, or it's a bad song <laughs> for me. I'm pretty black and white in that area. So anyway, he would have to go downstairs and burn the CD. Guess what time he would do that? Like we would have to leave. Say we were going to a wedding. This is what pops to my mind. We were going to a wedding. The wedding was in Alabama. The wedding was going to be about two or three hours to drive away from us, right? And so that required more than one CD for him to burn. So he wouldn't burn the music onto the CD the night before. He would do it the same day or the morning or maybe 30 minutes. And he would say, it's just going to take me a few minutes. And I would get so upset. I would get so upset with him because I just wanted to go. I wanted to be on time. And, you know, I, I wanted to see my friend. And I, I didn't want to, you know, and then all these things were created in my mind. Like, we can't get there. I don't know where we're going. I don't know what to look forward to. You know, it's a big church. We're going to open a door and it's going to creak and everybody's going to see that we're late. Um, I was just, I had... A huge imagination and it was horrible in my thought process of what was going to happen right and so um, and so all that stuff would be going on and I would just start you know kind of 
kind of bickering with him on the sly, you know, like being passive aggressive. But then I didn't want to really want to come out in full with a full argument about it. But I would say things like, didn't you burn music last time? What about the CDs you already made, hon? We have a whole container of those. We still have those, those containers of CDs. And I would try to persuade him and get him to rethink the process. And he would be adamant. No, this is what I'm doing. Right. And so he would go for it and do it. And um, we get in the car. I'm looking at the time. I'm looking at the fact that we're not going to be late for this wedding. I know for a fact we're going to be late for this wedding. And I would have a bad attitude, really bad. And I would give him either the silent treatment or, you know, or just have a, just say things I shouldn't say. The atmosphere in the car was just cold, right? The time, this three hour drive or two hour drive, whatever it was, was now um, not a time of joy and intimacy of time that we are in the car uninterrupted. It was a time of bickering and cold shoulder. And then he would in turn have a, um, be angry and upset, right? Because he couldn't really figure out what my problem was. And um, I didn't understand why he couldn't. And it just created this whole um, dramatic time of just foolishness, right? It really did. Because what was I trying to do? I was trying to change him. I wanted him to change. Now, I'm not saying, you know, and I'm not telling you that there are certain things that your husband shouldn't change, right? There are certain things that they should change, right? I'm saying that you're not the one to change them, right? So what do you do in those situations when there's something that needs to change and you can't? I always, when I'm praying about, you know, something that has gone on between my husband and I, I start, you know, praying and the Lord always asks me about me, right? He always asks me about me. He didn't ask me about my husband. He asked me about me. What are you doing? How did you react to that situation, Keisha? Um, what could you have done differently? What shouldn't you have said? What shouldn't you have done, right? And so that he brings, um, he convinces me, because that's what conviction comes from. He convinces me that I have done, I was doing, I did something wrong. I sinned right? My husband is my father's, your father, um, responsibility. That's who he belongs to, right? And I'm not talking, listen, I'm not talking about severe um, consequences where you are in a life or death situation. I'm not talking about abusive relationships or, or where you're physically in danger. It's not what this is about, okay? This is for the um, the average husband and wife um, who's dealing with a situation, the average wife who's dealing with a situation where she just wants her husband to do some things different and he is not seeming seemingly getting the hint, right? And so this is one of those opportunities. So what do you do when you are uh, wanting him to change something, wanting him to help around the house, wanting him to be more um, proactive in the lives of the children, wanting him to leave family worship, to be the proper priest of his home, and he's not doing it. What do you do, right? Can't change him. Can change a light bulb. What can you change? He can change you, right? You can look at how you react to that situation, right? And look at it in light of God's truth. What are we called to be as wives, right? Nobody is going, no husband wants to um, interact with a nagging wife, right? The Bible calls that drip, drip, drip on their heads where they're just like, you're getting on my nerves and I want to stay away from you. Not what we want, not the direction you want them to go in, right? And so in the process, what does the Lord do to us when we are doing things we have no business Right? What is he? How does he deal with us? He deals with us in kindness, right? He deals with us by teaching us through his word. He deals with us by consistently still loving us, right? Still treating us as sons and daughters because that's who we are, right? And so, in our relationships with our husbands, when they are doing things that we are just thinking that should change. 
we shouldn't direct that at them exactly. Right? We should be looking at ourselves. Not once again, not to say that they couldn't change. Right? There are times when a conversation needs to be had, and you can respectfully um, converse with your husband about situations that are affecting you and affecting the home. Right? And there's a way to do that, a way to you for you to make your appeal to him, right? In a way that he would receive it. And but still, even after you make that appeal, you still can't make him do what it is that you want him to do. Right. And so if you're asking and you're desiring for him to do something that is that lines up with scripture, lines up with God's word, being a priest of the home, um, you know, your needs are not being properly provided for. There's a lot of lack and maybe there's spending on his side that could be fine tuned to make more money available for what your needs are. You know, there are a lot of situations out there and I can't speak to them all, but I can give you a formula, right? Look to yourself first, all right? Look to yourself first. See where there are things that you need to do that maybe the Lord is saying, when I change this in you, I'll work on him. Sometimes he does that. He's done that with me. I'll be like, Lord, please, please make Dwayne, blah, 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 blah. And I, I, you change this. You stop getting a bad attitude. You stop being passive aggressive. You stop giving him the quiet treatment. I want you to have joy in the midst of suffering sometimes, right? First world problem suffering, right? I want you to um, be consistent and patient in your attitude you know, toward your husband, even when he's not doing things that you deem to be um, the right thing. I want you, Keisha, to be consistent. I want you to love him. I want you to be respectful, even when you don't think he is deserving respect or whatever it is. Right. And so sometimes the Lord is building that character in us, the consistency in us. Right. And once he gets that, You know, a lot of times he's working on our husband. Trust the Lord with your husband. That's his son, right? That's his creation. And for those ladies, sisters out there who are married to unbelieving husbands, right? Still, trust your husband. There's no one who isn't subject to the Lord, right? And so he's trustworthy. You can trust him with your husband, your unbelieving husband. You can trust him with your believing husband. You can trust him with any situation and any person. Nothing's subject to him. Not, there's nothing that isn't subject to him, right? And so we rely on him and we trust the Lord, right? In the, in the midst of our circumstances that may look bleak, may look like the Lord isn't moving. Lord, this has been going on for, um, you know, 15 years now. I've been trying to get my husband to lead family worship and he just won't do it. Or I've been trying to get him to get a better job so that we can move out of this shabby apartment or whatever the circumstances may be. Right. The Lord hears our prayers. We know that. Right. The Lord is pleased to answer our prayers according to his will. Right. And so we have to be patient and we have to be consistent with that situation. And when we start to change the way we react to our husbands, right, that gives opportunity for them to not be distracted by reacting to our negative, sinful nature, right? When I start nagging and having a passive aggressive attitude, stop bickering, stop giving him the cold shoulder. Now, what does he have to react to, right? He, He didn't have that anymore. So in essence, I just changed something by changing me, by concentrating on me, by maturing in the Lord and and um, crucifying my flesh and allowing the Holy Spirit to bring my flesh asunder, right? And so when I do that, my husband now doesn't have that that outward manifestation of my my weakness to deal with anymore. Now he's just kind of left with, okay, she's not fussing at me about this anymore. She's not bickering. She's not, she's not in a bad attitude about it. You know, he, you know, in the first, the first few days, you know, before you, you know, bind your flesh, you know, the first few times he comes in into a situation that that's always been an area of active arguments and 
act of bad attitudes, etc., he comes into it expecting the same thing that you've always done, right? And so when you do it differently, now he has to change the way that he is dealing with you in a way that he's seen the situation, right? And you give, you know, just by us um, controlling our flesh, controlling ourselves, we give some a lot of leeway for the Holy Spirit to now speak and for him to hear from the Lord, right? Because before all he can hear is you, you're nagging. Even if you weren't saying anything, the silent treat, treatment is loud, especially to husbands, right? The nagging is loud, right? The passive aggressive slamming a plate down, you know, half kissing a man when he comes in from work or half kissing him when you come in or whatever that situation is, those things are blaringly loud to them, right? And so when we control ourselves, we control our flesh, we give them an opportunity to now hear from the Lord, right? And now the, the Holy Spirit is this kind of convicting them now of things that they've been doing, right? Because you have changed the atmosphere. You've, contro- you've controlled your flesh, right? And you're not doing the same. I'm not saying that it's, it's an instant overnight change that happens, right? Sometimes these things take a long time. Sometimes they take a short time right? But time is relative, right? Long, short. Um, it's going to take the time that it's going to take. That's that's the answer. I'm sorry. I wish I had a more specific um, answer for you. But we trust the Lord, right? And even if, even if the situation does, does not change, even if our husbands remain the same, guess what we know for sure? We know for sure that that is the Lord's doing, right? We know that if he if he could listen, if he can make you and me born again in him, if he can change the heart of man, woman and child, right? If he controls the 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 minds and the hearts and the hands of kings and queens and world leaders, right? He he talks about that in the Bible. He brings one up and puts one down. Right. He uses everyone. There's no one, nothing that isn't subject to the king of kings and Lord of lords. Right. So if you're in a situation and it hasn't changed and God decides that it's not going to change. Right. Then you praise him in the midst of it anyway. Right. You give praises to the Lord anyway, because he is still good. Right. And he's not. But he's not subject to us. Right? And so we see things that we think that may be better for us if it just happened this way. And the Lord, in his wisdom, all of it, may say, hey, no, I'm going to leave this thorn in your side, just like he did with his apostle Paul. Right? He left that thorn in his side to remind him of God's goodness, to remind him of who he was and what he was subject to in the Lord. And sometimes the Lord does not change things just because we want it or even because it seems like it's good for him to change, right? We don't understand sometimes why the Lord does what he does or doesn't do what he what we'd like him to do. But we trust him. We trust him. He is trustworthy, okay? So never forget that. Pray for him. Pray for your husband, right? Call out to the Lord about him, Lord. But just make sure that as you're calling out to the Lord about your husband, you are reminded that he's changing you, right? He's going to go for something in your flesh to change and to create and to make new, right? He's going to do that. So that is my snippet of wisdom for you today, right? Um, I wish I knew that. I went through a lot of my time trying to change people, right? In my mind, I wanted to create a husband in my own image. And some of us are very guilty of that, right? I wanted to create this perfect husband, right? Who would be no husband at all. He would be just like a, a you know, a, a ugly man, <laughs> you know, a woman dressed up like a man, you know, because I'm trying to make him the way I want him to be based on the attributes that I deem to be the most important. And that's not what you want for your husband. You want him to be all that the Lord has called him to be, right? You trust the Lord that the Lord is creating him into the image of his son, just like he's creating you into the image of of his son as well, right? 
And so we leave the details to our husband. We would find so much more joy if we would learn how to control ourselves in our marriages and release our husbands to the Lord and trust him with it. Trust him with us. Trust him with him. Right? We'd be so much more joyful. Right? Stop trying to tell him how to drive. You know, if he just stopped driving so fast. Hey, I understand. But sometimes we need to say less. A lot of times we need to say less. Right? Sometimes he drives too slow. Um, you know, stop talking. Leave him. Leave him alone. Right? Pray. Trust the Lord hears you. Let the man be the man. Right? Let him do what he's doing. No, it's not perfect, but you're not his mom. And I said in another uh, video I did, you know, no one wants to make love to their mom or anybody who's acting like their mom, right? You're nagging him about driving. You're nagging him about what he wears. You're nagging him about what he, how he interacts with the children. You know, you, you're pestering him about asking for a raise at work. You, you're getting on him about not uh, switching jobs. You're getting on him about not, you know, he should join a choir at church and he should be a deacon. He should hush, hush. Focus on you. What should you be doing? Are you loving him? Are you respecting him? Are you submitting to him? Right? Are you inspiring your husband? I have a video about um, the superpower of a godly wife, right? The, the gift of inspiring our husbands. That's what we want to focus on. We want to focus on inspiring them and motivating them by being the wives that we have been called to be according to God's word, right? According to what he's laid out. Does that mean your husband is perfect? No. Does that mean he's not going to do things to drop you completely crazy? <laughs> no. My husband still does. And I love him the pieces and there are things he does. And I'm like, <laughs> but my husband loves me as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Right. And he is not perfect. But guess what? This girl ain't perfect either. I am not perfect. Right. I do stuff all the time. Right. It's just that what I do is minimized in my own mind. And what he does is just exaggerated. Right. Because of somebody else's sin or foolishness. You know, you see everybody else's dirt and you, you know, you're like, well, that's not so bad. That's just a little dust. But over there. Right. We have a tendency to do that. Right. And so we are not perfect. But yet sometimes we're expecting perfection in our husbands. Right. And I'm telling you that's wrong. That's not what you want to do. Take some time to. Pray about the situations that you have been being upset um, concerning as it pertains to your husband. And look at how you can approach that situation from an area of self-control, an area of grace. The Lord extends grace to us, y'all. He don't pounce on us every time we do something wrong. There's a lot of grace the Lord extends to us, right? And we need to extend grace to our husbands. Right. And so I just want you to ponder that because I hear it a lot. I get it a lot. And that was definitely an area I definitely struggled in. Right. That whole control, get him to do what I want. If he would just change and become like this, then everything would be great. And you know what? There was never enough change that he could do that I would be satisfied with. You know why? Because when I'm mostly disgruntled with me, it's so much easier to be really disgruntled with my husband. And it's just, um, it's amazing how that works, right? I'm frustrated about me. And now I'm starting looking at everything wrong with everybody else in the house. You know, the kids, your house clean up, you didn't do enough. You know, you're late from work, you know, just on and on and on. And it's really, I need to focus in and go before the Lord and spend some time with him and receive from him. So anyway, I just wanted to leave you with that nugget of wisdom from the biblical wife. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for passing these videos along. I would love to um, continue to grow my audience to really get to those wives that are out there. I was one. I wish I had someone speaking into my life about practical things I just didn't do right and didn't understand how to deal with them 
Um, and so this is an opportunity for me to share the wisdom that the Lord has given me to share with you. Right. And so if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Subscribe. I love to hear from you. Um, and I love you in the Lord. OK, until next time. Bye.